Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. So good to be in the house of God tonight. If we can all stand up. Amen. We were recently out of town at a men's breakfast, and they were singing a song, and it went something like the lyrics that we're together again, praising the Lord. We're together again in one accord, and something good is about to happen. Amen. I just want to say something good is about to happen. We're together again in the house of the Lord. Let's begin to love the Lord. Let's begin to glorify the Lord and praise Him. So let's open up with some prayer, and God is going to meet you in this place. If you have a need tonight, God is going to meet you in this place. Amen? Amen. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we just pray, God, that you would move in this place, Lord, that your spirit would touch us, God, that you would reveal yourself to us more, Lord, and that you would bless us and move upon us, God. Right now, we call upon your name, Jesus. Amen. Another one, I am free. Oh, I am free. Oh, I am free. See, hell lost another one, I am free. Oh, I am free. Come on, if you're free, sing it out, say. Hell lost another one, I am free. Savior 
I think he said he forgot his phone. 
and he wants to know if someone can grab it for him from downstairs in the washroom. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Praise God. Okay. Praise the Lord. Before we go any further, um, we have some announcements. So April 6th on Saturday, Jesse and Felicia's wedding reception will be happening at 2 p.m. And if you'd like to attend that, please get in touch with Sister Chevry and make a reservation. Amen. Okay, April 16th, the ladies' Bible study and luncheon will be happening here at the church. Get in touch with the ladies, and you don't want to miss that. It's going to be a great time. I'm sure it's going to be powerful. So come out and have a good time with the saints. Amen. April 17th, after service, we have a potluck. All the proceeds go to save the children. There's going to be an auction for some dessert, and um, yeah, if you can, contribute to that, and come out and it's going to be a good time. Amen. Praise God. I just have a verse I'd like to share. The Bible says, it's not the verse, um, Proverbs 15, 22. Amen. I, I can pull it up. That's okay. It says, okay, without counsel, purposes are disappointed, but in the multitude of counselors, they are established. Amen. So what the Lord is telling us here in the scripture is that when we have goals and we have all these aspirations, and these are good things, but without counsel, our purposes, they're disappointed. They come to nothing. But in the multitude of counselors, they are established. And so we have a great church. We have a great pastor. We have a great body. We have great saints here. And when you have goals and you have aspirations, you don't need to do it on your own. There is a multitude of counselors and we could come together and work together and accomplish great things because nothing great has ever been accomplished alone. It takes a team. And so without counsel, purposes are disappointed. But in the multitude of counselors, they are established. Amen. So be, be encouraged and know that we're here together as a family and we're a community and there's a multitude of us here. And so your aspirations, your goals, your dreams, they can be established. We can do it as a team in Jesus' name. And so if we can all stand up, we're going to get back into worship. And let's just love the Lord in this place. Let's love the Lord and Let's, let's thank God for the church he's given us, for the body of Christ. Because we're a family and we need each other, amen? And God is so good to us. So we're going to worship the Lord one more time. We're going to lift up his name in Jesus' name, amen.
It's all about you. It's all about you, God. Yes, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm king of endless words. No one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, yes, all I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song, for the song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within. Let's go ahead. Let's worship him. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our praise. Let's take a moment. Let's worship God. Hallelujah, Lord. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. Hallelujah. 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 God, I worship you. You're sovereign today. You're holy today. You're mighty today. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God, hallelujah. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, praise God. I believe with all of my heart, I believe, and I have confidence that the Pentecostals of Windsor can do better than that. Praise God. We're a saved bunch bunch we're going to heaven god has forgiven us nobody has forsaken us but our youth have and uh, god bless them as they go in jesus name but i believe that we can one more time give him some praise from our heart <laughs> hallelujah lord i worship you i love you lord jesus i love you lord jesus i love you lord jesus hallelujah 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 god i worship you i worship you i worship you i worship you hallelujah 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 
Praise God in Jesus' name. Amen. Good to see everybody in the house of the Lord. It's so great to have Larry and Colleen home. Praise God. They were in. <laughs> Praise God. They always on the road. So I asked Sister Colleen before church, you know, just trying to determine where they're living. I said, where do you get your mail? She said, Fredericton. But there were two Brockville, two of the granddaughters or grandchild's birthday party. They were to Ajax today. They're in Windsor tonight. But if you want to send them a letter, send it to Fredericton, New Brunswick. <laughs> Praise God. It's good to have you folks here. He's going to be working in Fredericton for a while. Or in Fredericton. Thank you, Windsor, for a while. Praise God. I'm glad to have them here. Glad to have everybody out in the church on a Sunday night. And I do say and I do appreciate having church on Sunday night. Praise God. I love having church on Sunday night. What else would you do? If you didn't have church, what would you do? Stare at the walls? Like, what would you do on a Sunday? This is, this is our, the world has Friday and Saturday night. We have Sunday night. Praise God. Praise God. And uh, that's probably the reason why they don't give me preaching on much because I tell them that. Stop being lazy and have church. Praise God. Proverbs chapter number one. Proverbs chapter one. It's so great to see everybody here today. Proverbs chapter one and seven says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Praise God. Don't forget why we started. Don't forget why you started serving God. Don't forget what is the genesis of our experience with God. What brought us to this place? Remember where you were. What, what, what made you bow your knee in the presence of God and acknowledge him that he's holy and mighty and that you turned your life over to him? Don't forget why we started. Lord, we're thankful for your presence today. We're thankful for your holiness. We're thankful for your grace and mercy. We're thankful for your word. Bless our youth downstairs. Bless us here this evening. And Lord, bless those that are home and traveling. And we pray in Jesus' name. God bless you. You may be seated. <clears throat> when an, an idea or a group or an organization, even a church, through time, forgets or forget why they started in the first place, over time it leaves its purpose and its identity. If you forget why you started as an organization or a group in a church, and forget why we started in the first place, you will lose your purpose and identity. There's colleges and university in our present world that are teaching principles contrary to the holy principle of God's word. They're teaching there is no God, those university, a lot of those universities start out as Bible colleges, training young men to go into the ministry. And somewhere over the years, they forgot why they started. They forgot their genesis. Why did we start a Bible college? And over the years, because they forgot why they started, they have grabbed a hold of different ideologies and has led them so far from where they started. You would not recognize where they started to where they are today. There's some churches that started by honest people, desiring a move of God, desiring God to bless them, and separated from their church and began another church in sincerity. But over the years, they forgot their forefathers of why did we start? What was our purpose? And it can happen to us. Why did we start? We got no contract with God that he's going to bless us forever and ever. Amen. But we've got to remember, why did we start? Why we as a church begin? I thank God that the church began to preach holiness, separation, godliness, the gospel, the coming of the Lord. We are not exempt from this erosion if we're not careful. Why did we start? You begin to question why am I following the Lord? What is the basis of my relationship with God? Does holiness matter? Does separation matter? Does the wonders of God message that we love and preach, does it matter? 
you begin to question, really? And when you begin to question things and forget you, why you started it, you come into an arena called compromise. Compromise starts with one little thing after one little thing. And the Bible says, be careful that the small foxes that spoil the vines. And we've got to be so careful of compromise that God will allow me to feel his presence if I do this and the pastor don't know. But God knows. God knows all things. We must be very, very careful as a church not to fall into boring, lifeless, ritual, routine of Christianity. we got to keep it fresh. The Bible instructs us to tear up the fallow ground, to tear up the ground of your heart. And as we sang it here today, I'm, I'm going back to the, to the place of worship. It's, it's not about light shows and smoke screens and rock and roll for Jesus. It's, it's about that place where I can come into the presence of God and worship him. And I'm not judging. I'm not judging nobody. But I want to go back to the place where I worship God when I first got into church. I want to, I want to go back to the place where I worship God before I came into church. I prayed to God before I got into church. I asked God to help me, to deliver me, set me free. God, if you're out there, and I remember looking at a dark sky at nighttime, looking up there, and God, if you're up there, let me know. God, if, if you're up there, I, I want to serve you. Deliver me. We've got to go back to that place where we're so in love with Jesus. Remember those days that tears going down your face and your hands raised in worship to God? Nothing else mattered. But that moment in the presence of God, time seemed to cease. Things didn't matter. Worry was not invited. But yet you begin to worship God and praise God, and you connect it with the Lord. And we've got to be so careful that, that we don't lose that first love. The Bible says in Revelation 2 and 1, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because I was left thy first love. The church in Ephesus was doing a great work for God. God was ministering to them, but they somehow went into neutral. There's no neutral gear in the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, there's only full steam ahead. But the church in Ephesus were doing God's work. They were busy for the Lord, but they lost their, they left their first love. Could you imagine that? Doing something for God, yet you don't love him no more? doing something for God, being busy for the Lord, but you, you don't love his presence no more. And that's what happened to church in Ephesus. They, they were doing church work. They were doing their Christian duty. However, they, they forsook. The first and greatest commandment recorded in Matthew 22 and 37, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. Folks, this is the greatest in the first commandment. That takes care of holiness. That takes care of righteousness. That takes care of the sin question. That takes care of temptation. That takes care of doubt. That takes care of fear. That takes care of unbelief. That takes care of compromise. If we keep that first commandment, thou shalt love the Lord with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. We can never leave that commandment. That ought to be the thesis of our life that, that propels us through life with joy unspeakable and full of glory. It should be the commandment that when we get up in the morning, our hands and our voices raised to God in praise and worship. I remember why I started. I remember what I'm doing. I love the Lord with all of my heart, with all of my soul, with all of my mind. That is our genesis. That is our purpose. That is our calling. That is why we started out. And don't forget forget why we started to love the Lord Jesus said this is the first and great commandment if we did that as a church folks you know as a pastor I'm trying to talk myself out of a job if we would do this if we would love the Lord with all of our strength our mind everything that's inside of us it would make the church preaching so much easier our devotion to Jesus would take care of the issues our devotion to Jesus will take care of the temptation. I wouldn't have to go up here and dangle who's over the pit of hell. But you come to choice because you come to church because you love the Lord. 
You, you, you come and worship because you love him. You come with joy in your heart, a spring in your heel, and you walk into the church and say, I'm here because I love him. I'm here because he first loved me. I worship him because he loved me. Praise God. That's what it's all about. The greatest commandment. Don't ever lose that. Don't ever lose that, 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 that first and great commandment that thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all our heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is where it started. This is, this is, this is where it all started. When we first met the Lord, remember that night? Remember going to that night before any of the relationship, before anything in the arena of Christianity, before worship, before holiness, we are to love the Lord with everything that is within us, everything. Before my wife, I got to love the Lord. Before my kids, I got to love the Lord. Before my grandkids, I got to love the Lord. Before my three-pound little dog, I got to love the Lord. We've got to love the Lord. Don't mix it up. If I put my wife between God and I, I have committed idolatry. I got to love God first and then her. I got to love God first and then my family. Don't mix it up. That's called backsliding. That's called losing out. You'll be looking for a reason to take your devotion and your love out of, out of your heart toward God. We must love the Lord with everything that's inside of us. Praise God. Everything. Praise God. We got to do it with everything inside of us. And when we do this, everything tends to fall in place. When we love God first, everything falls in place. Matthew 16, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, and these things shall be added unto you. When we put God first, I'm talking to you tonight. I'm talking to somebody. When you put God first, everything's going to fall in place in your life. The will of God is going to be done. The purpose of God is going to be done. The calling of God is going to be done. And you're going to grow close to God when you keep God in the center of your heart. Your devotion. You get up tomorrow morning with praise in your heart. You face Tuesday morning, I'm still a Christian. Wednesday morning, I'm still a Christian. I still love Jesus. How about you? I'm a Jesus fan. I'm a Jesus freak. I love Jesus because he first loved me. I want to love him with everything that's inside of me. I want to love Jesus. This is where it started. What converted me was the love of God. It wasn't I lost a full contact Bible study. I'm a Christian today because of God's love. I'm, in, I'm a Christian today because I came to a Pentecostal altar, bowed my knee, cried out to God for forgiveness and mercy, and God gave me forgiveness and mercy. And then I realized my God loves me. God loves me. That totally freaked me out. All the hatred and the darkness of my heart began to step away as God's love began to penetrate my heart. That's where we started, folks. Praise God. We started at the foot of the cross. At the foot of the cross. We used to sing a song years ago. Thanks to Calvary, I don't go there anymore. It was a life full of aimless desperation, without hope. To walk a shell of a man. But I made my way to Calvary many years ago and looked up at love, looked up at Jesus and realized that he loved me. My sins put him on the cross, yet he still loved me. My iniquities and transgressions put him on the cross, yet he loved me. I deserved his wrath. I deserved his judgment. I deserved to be separated from for eternity. But God looked through all of my sin and transgressions and your sins and your transgressions and said, I love you. I love you. I love you. And this is our beginning, folks. Let's never lose it. Let's never, just, don't ever become like a church in Ephesus. I'm doing church work, but I don't love Jesus. I've got something against you because you've left your first love. The oomph is not there. It's not there. 
You're coming to church and you're worshiping me, but you're drawing nigh to me with your lips, but your heart is a million miles away. You're hoping that you can do a little duty of worship and pull it over God's eyes, and if the trumpet should sound tomorrow, you're ready to go. God's not looking for lip service. God's looking for sincere worship and praise to God from a broken heart, from a thankful heart, from a heart that's filled with the goodness and the grace of God. Hallelujah. Who here loves the Lord? Who here loves the Lord? Why couldn't you love the Lord? He's a good, good father. Oh, yes, he is. He's a long-suffering father. He's a faithful father. He's a great, great savior, is he not? He is so good to me when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. My soul cries out, hallelujah, praise God for saving me. I know where I came from. I know the moment that I met Jesus of Nazareth. I know the night that I bowed my knee at an altar. And gave my life to the Lord and said, God, take me, use me. And God has done so great things. And I want to remember, remember the goodness of God. I want to remember the greatness of God. I don't want to become a professional Pentecostal. Oh, Jesus. Like, get, get, get rid of that foolishness. I want to be an apostolic Pentecostal on fire for God, thankful for the presence of God. Hey, Jesus, I love you tonight. You've been so good to me. I want to worship you and praise you. Hallelujah. We Oh, Proverbs 1 and 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Wisdom is what leads us to the awe and amazement that leads us to a relationship with the author of wisdom. God. Wisdom is what leads us to the awe and amazement that leads us to a relationship with God. In other words, godly wisdom turns us to who created us. Godly wisdom causes us to stand in the presence of God in awe and amazement and say, God, you are holy. The wisdom of God is more powerful and more depth than the wisdom of this world. God knows all things. There's nothing hidden from God. The very hairs of your head are numbered. He knows all things. When a sparrow falls, he notices it. Nothing escapes his eye. Nothing escapes what he knows. This, that revelation of being amazed with God in awe of God. I hope, we, I hope we're still in awe of God. I hope when you come to church, when you come to the presence of God, you, you still, like, just like Christmas morning, all excited. I hope we never, I hope we never get boring. Go, oh, no. They're going to worship again. Here they go. Brother so-and-so is going to dance, and sister so-and-so is going to cry, and oh, they're going to lift their hands. They're going to drag this song out. Oh, please, torture me. But I hope you engage in worship. I hope you love to worship God today. And that you're, you're, you're still, I don't know about you folks, I'm a new convert. I know you guys are all seasoned saints, and I understand that. But I, I'm, still an, I'm still a new convert, and I'm still totally freaked out that Jesus saved me. I'm, I'm, I'm totally blown away. I'm, like, I'm not taking this for granted. I'm, I, I still say to myself sometimes, I can't believe this. I'm saved. I'm like, I know I'm a new convert, and I'll get professional in a few more years. Just be patient with me. But I'm still like, whew. you feel God, you go, wow. I still love that presence. I still love the spirit when it touches me. Praise God. I'm still, I'm, I'm, I know I'm a new convert, and, 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 uh, and I'm learning. I'm, I'm trying to get professional. And, but then I come into his presence, and I realize that he loved me, and I begin to weep in the presence of God. He's changed my life. He's, he's done so many good things in my life. And he's delivered me. He broke my DNA. And, and now i got a holy DNA going through my veins tonight. God separated me from my heredity and my, and, and, and my environment, which I was bound into before Jesus. But when we came to Jesus, he severs that. You have to, because your daddy was an alcoholic, doesn't mean you have to be an alcoholic. God has set us free. God severed us, and he put a, sp a spiritual DNA inside of us, and he made us absolutely new creatures in him. Your heredity is severed. Your environment is severed. I was telling the people this afternoon some stories about down home. Crazy, folks. 
I was brought up in a circus. It was, it was crazy stuff. Sort of fun at the time. Cops came flying through our door one day. No search warrant. They came flying through, run down our quarter. My second oldest brother's sleeping, innocent that night. And the cops went flying in his room, grabbed his arm, and checked his pulse because it was a beanie uptown. They said, it's surely got to be worn. So they came down, put their hands on his wrist. No search warrant. We're watching TV, Archie Bunker. Keep the noise down. If you're going to arrest him, take him up the back door. But he, he was, his, his pulse was normal. And it wasn't him. So they, they leave, don't say nothing to us. We're going, see us later. We'll have coffee on the next time, probably this, this time next week. But God, when he came to Jesus, he severed that. Brand new creatures in Jesus Christ. Brand new creatures in Jesus Christ. The theme of Proverbs is this. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That little book of 31 chapters, which I love, 31 chapters of the book of Proverbs, 13 times it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord. It's the beginning of wisdom. Wisdom and righteousness go together. Listen to this. It is good to be wise, and it's wise to be good. Wisdom and righteousness go together. They're interlocked. It's good to be wise, and it's also wise to be good. Wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to judge and act according to God's direction. It's the ability to judge and act according to God's direction. When we came to the Lord, the wisdom that he gave to us, we're able to judge and act according to God's direction. In other words, we begin to follow him. And he led us out of darkness, like we said this morning, into his marvelous light. He took us from the world, and he put us in the church. He took us from the mire and put us in the choir. He took us from a hopeless end and gave us the prince of hope. He gave us from a life of turmoil and gave us the prince of peace. It all begins with wisdom, the ability. When you feel God's presence, when, you, when, you're, when you're in the church and you're, somebody's preaching and singing and you feel God, something begins to get a hold of your heart. And I love the old guys used to sing, something got a hold of my heart. Remember the old guys singing that? Something got a hold of my heart. Praise God. He was saying, it's real. It's real. Praise God, I know it's real. This Pentecostal blessing, and I know, I know it's real. One guy, he was singing, he said, I, I had to go check out the Holy Rollers. So he went to church, and they were singing, they were shouting, and they were dancing, they were clapping. He said it didn't make sense to him, but he felt God's presence. It was but a few Weeks after that, he was singing, and he was dancing, and he was shouting, and he was saying, it's real, it's real. Praise God, I know it's real. When we're touched by God, things begin to change. When we're touched by God, your life will be changed. I told you my story. I went to a Pentecostal church the first time. I was 17 years old. Just calling those Pentecostals are crazy. I'm sitting down. I have my back to the wall, which I still do. I had my back to the wall in that Southport Community Center, and they stirred it. And I said, dear God, I'm crazy, and I know it. But these poor people, they're crazy, and they don't know it. And they were worshiping and praising God and beating up in the instruments, and then they preached in the power of God. My first message, I can still it 40-some years ago. I still remember the first message. He preached on the power of God. His vein was popping in his head, and there was spit flying everywhere. His tie was crooked. And I'm sitting there, wow, wow. I, I met a guy at General Conference this year. I said, Nathaniel, I talk about you all the time. He teared up. I said, when I first went to a Pentecostal church, you were a little kid. He walked up to me and he said, hey, mister, you coming back to church again? I looked at Nathaniel. He's smaller then, bigger than I am now. I said, no, you freaky little kid. If I get out of here, you'll never see me again. And I left that church, went to McDonald's with my brother. He asked me, what do you think of that? I said, George, said, man, that's crazy, man. You don't have to do all that kind of stuff. Can't we just be normal, you know? And I get home. I said, I'm never going to go back. Like, jumpings. Like, goodness gracious. I thought, I thought I was going to start swinging. 
like kung fu hoodoo. That one of those Pentecostals come near me, I was going to bop him. In Jesus' name. So I left that church, and for three months, three months, I, I began to party like there was no tomorrow. It wasn't there no more. The drunken stupor wasn't there no more. I didn't enjoy it no more. And all the other stuff we're engaged in, it didn't, it lost its touch, it lost its flavor, and I'd sit there crying, crying. Drunk as a skunk, couldn't stand up, crying my eyes out. I'd go by myself, drunk as a skunk, through my hometown, walking the streets of my hometown, so drunk, crying, all by myself, crying my eyes out. My buddies would catch me and say, what's wrong? And my bottom lip would start to shake. I went to a Pentecostal church in, in August. Oh, stay away from those guys. They'll brainwash you. Have you seen my thoughts lately? A good little brainwashing will probably help me. <laughs> and so I okay, I try to take your advice and let's go party. Well, we go party. Let's start again. What's wrong? Are you tripping? I went to a Pentecostal church in August. Don't go there. They'll brainwash you. And three months later, contrary to my wishes, contrary to my words, I went back to that Pentecostal church. Heard the preaching, heard the singing, watched the worship. It wasn't crazy this time. It was too long. I'm doing what they did. God got a hold of my heart. I'm not going to argue whether there's somebody's God or not. I know there's a God. He got a hold of my heart and changed me. Praise God. That's my genesis. I, I don't want to ever lose my first love. I, I, I never want to lose why I'm in the church. I never want to lose why am I a Christian? Why do I worship? Why do I go to church all the time? They're going to ask me, what you do this weekend? Went to church twice on Sunday. I never want to lose that. I never want to lose that reason why, why I'm a Christian. It's good to fear God. It's good to fear God. Church, we got to fear God. We got to reverence God. Ananias and Sapphira, in Acts chapter number five, they sold some property and amongst themselves they conspired. Well, this is a good time to say, but. They did a little conspiracy theorist, and he said, you know what, honey, we sold this land for $2,500. Let's tell the church we sold it for $1,500, and you get 1000 and we'll go shopping when it all settles down. So Ananias went in before the apostles and said, did you sell the land for... $1,500? Yeah, I did. Pastor, you're going to like my ties. I believe it was Peter said, why, is the, why, is, why have you lied against the Holy Ghost? You didn't sell it for $1,500. You sell it for $2,500. And you've lied against the Holy Ghost. He dropped instantly dead. They took him and he buried him. A few hours later, in comes his wife. Sapphire, did you sell that land for $1,500? Oh, yes, Pastor, we did. We did. Why have you and your husband conspired to lie against the Holy Ghost? The feet that carried your husband out and buried him are at the door. And she dropped it instantly dead. And the Bible says, And great fear came upon all the church, and upon as many have heard these things, we need a revival of fear back in the church. I don't want nobody to drop dead, but I want fear back in the church where you don't lie to God, you don't lie to the past, you don't lie to nobody, you tell the truth. You're honest before men, women, and God. We need fear back in, the, in our hearts. I don't want to offend God. I don't want to bring the wrath of God down upon my life. I, I need the fear of God in my heart that, that I got to be so careful what I do, what I say. 
We need, we need the fear. We need revival of fear back in the church. We're not, it's more than just having church. We're in the presence of God. This is more than just a book of 1,228 chapters. But this is a, the word of God. We need to be convicted and convinced that this is God's word. And in fear, we'll obey it. In reverence, Ananias and Sapphira hardened their hearts. They were Christians. They weren't out in the party scene. They were Christians, but they, they lied against God. And great fear came upon the church. They realized God's in our presence. God is here. We need a revelation that when we come to church, where two or three are gathered together, and I know it's talking about restoration, but where two or three are gathered together in his name, Jesus said, there I am in the midst of them. God's here tonight. I don't want to step in a line. I want to honor his presence. I want to honor his sovereignty. I want to honor his holiness. I want to honor his righteousness. And be so careful what I say. Be so careful what I think. Be so careful, God. Let the fear come back in my heart. That when I first came to church, they said, you don't do this and you don't do that. I didn't question them. I just simply didn't do this and I didn't do that. They taught us that and I came to church. I didn't know anything about Christianity. I got rid of my shirts that advertised Budweiser and Moosehead. That stuff all went out. Got rid of that stuff. Got rid of much other stuff that wasn't pleasing to God. We had fear back then. We had reverence. We want to please God. We want the blessing of God upon our life. And we're trying to revive that in our church. We need conviction and we need fear back in the church. And these are not popular messages no more. Everybody wants these make me feel good, Pastor, messages. Dazzle me with your intellect and your insight, Pastor. So I can write big words down. But a simple message of, of Proverbs 1 and 7 is not popular anymore. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Ah, shut up. I'll go over here and hear this guy say, hey, you're doing good, man. You can do what you want. Go where you want. Just take Jesus with you. He's not going to judge you. No judging you. But we need fear back in our church to... Wow. Remember altar calls years ago to be altar calls? We'd, we'd come to the altar and weep and pray through and pray and ask God to be here for the sins we didn't, we did and didn't do the ones we planned to do. Now we have an altar call. It's like, mm, I'm not going. It's not in the mood. That's not my favorite song. I didn't like that message. Brother Shepherd offended me. Ah, oh, stink. I'll just sit right here. Whoa. The Holy Ghost is speaking. Whoa. Unto them. They are at ease in Zion. Woe unto them. We're on thin ice. And my job as a pastor is like, hey guys, God wants to bless us. Let's reverence him. Let's fear him. Let's respect him. Let's live a life that glorifies him. Now I know you're not going to leave here and say, man, that was a good message. I feel so good. I feel like, man, tremendous. You will if you reverence God. You will if you fear God. You will if you're aware that God sees everything you're doing. See, we're here on Sundays twice and Wednesdays and Saturdays for prayer. The rest of the week you're on your own. You can do what you want. Go where you want. Hug who you want. Lip lock who you want. Be careful, little feet, where you go. Be careful, little hands, what you touch. We need that fear, conviction. Help me, God, to walk in thine in that in integrity. That I remember that I'm a Christian. When Big John Studd comes looking for a girl, you say, I'm a Christian. I can't go with you. I'm talking to you prophetically. I can't. I can't be unequally bound to an unbeliever. What fellowship has light with darkness? Girls that are single. Look for a godly man that loves God. Guys, no matter what she looks like, if she's not serving God, she's not even on the radar. You're not even, you're not in the, delete, 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 delete. Beat the feet, beat the feet, beat the feet. Delete, 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 delete. I want to serve God. Praise God, I want to serve God. I was single for six years and I came to church. 
six years. I wasn't going to go some old dizzy broad. I wanted a godly woman that loved God, that we could join together and live for God together. Ooh, hang on. That's heavy stuff. When you leave her, remember God's going with you. In your house. In your thoughts. In your conversation. In your actions. God's going with us. I can stop if you guys want to do a Jericho. Try and lead them. Folks, you got to remember why you started. If you don't, you'll lose your identity. You will lose your purpose. You will lose your goal. You'll compromise. You'll flirt to convert. That never works. And, verse number 12 of Acts 5, and by the hands of the apostles, after the fear came upon the people, and by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among his people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. When God showed the church who he is and what he is and the consequence of sin and lying to him and bumped off Ananias and Sapphira, great fear came upon the church. They realized, whoa, this is more than just an institution. This is more than just a Sunday, th Sunday thing. God is in the midst of us, and we must walk circumspectly. We must walk in sincerity and godliness. And because they made that decision, and by the hands of the apostle were many signs and wonders wrought among his people. Judgment begins at the house of the Lord, but because they responded to that judgment, the blessing of God fell upon the people with miracles, signs, and wonders. I'm believing God for miracles, signs, and wonders. It's going to come when the church, the people of God, begin to reverence and fear God and remember where they came from and say, God, I'm believing you for miracles. And I'm choosing, like the rest of this church, I'm choosing to fear God, to reverence God, to love God. We need a revival of the fear of God. Walk in holiness and integrity and honesty and humility and reverence. Praise God. A few hundred years ago, a guy simply read a message. A preacher by the name of Jonathan Edwards. He read his message. He read his message. Us Pentecostals, we preach by the letter. We just open our mouth and let her fly. But Jonathan Edwards... He read his sermon, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. There was so much conviction in that church that night that grown men stood with their knuckles whitened from holding on the pew in front of them so hard, and they wept and shook under the power of God's conviction. And many were converted to the Lord because of a simple message read by a preacher, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. We need to go back to preaching that, folks, we are going to go to heaven, but there's a hell we must shun. There's responsibility as Christians. And I'm, I'm, if you feel condemned or judged, and that's not my intention. My intention is, here's my intention, and sincerity, Brother Mike, my, my, here's my intention, to keep you from a pitfall, to keep you from a season of temptation, to keep you from deception, to keep you from compromise, to keep you from losing out with God, or keep you from becoming lukewarm in God, and to keep you, I'm trying to keep you from having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, and Paul said, from such turn away, I'm, I'm trying my best, Brother John, I really am trying my best, beware, remember where he brought you from, remember the pit he dropped, he brought you from, remember the pit he kept you from. Remember that time you first felt the presence of God with tears going down your face and hands raised to God. You didn't care who saw you or what they said. You just said, I just got to talk to my Jesus for a while. That's all I'm trying to do. That's all my intent. And I'm not here to judge nobody. I'm not here pointing my fingers at anybody. I'm here to say, remember, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. 
that fearful awareness that God knows all things, sees all things, hears all things. This is the beginning of knowledge. But the Bible says in verse number seven, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fools come in the presence of God. They hear the same message. They hear the same songs. They watch the same worship. They have the same experience that we do, but they choose rather to go back out into the world and forget what they felt and forget the presence of God. They don't like instruction no more. They don't like wisdom. But we who are saved today, our wisdom is we be, it begins when we fear God, when we reverence God, when we realize that he leads, we follow. He leads, we follow. We don't take him from place to place and hope that he's coming with us. We don't take him from one set of arms to another set of arms and hope that he's coming with us. But we in sincerity pray, let thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Let your will. You should be praying every day that the will of God is done. I pray for my kids every day that the will of God be done in their life, that God will bless them and use them. Every day I pray that, Cheyenne, your name goes before God every day. Daddy prays, God, keep your hand upon my kid. Lead her and guide her. Let your will be done. Let your purpose be done. I can only bring her so far, and then i got to turn her over to God. And you can only serve God so much on your own strength, but you've got to turn it over to God. It's easy to live for God. I've told you this before. It's easy to live for God when you just say, God, I surrender. I give up. That's when it becomes easy. When I try to serve God in my own strength, my own ability, my own intellect, it's frustrating. It falls short of the glory of God. But when I can reach that place of total surrender to God, that brings victory. That brings liberty. That brings strength to live for God. It's easy to live for God. People struggle to live for God. Pastor, I'm trying. Stop it. Stop trying. You can't do it. But bow your knee and total surrender to God, and you can do it. Pastor, I'm, I'm trying not to go here, and I'm trying not to do this, and, and I'm trying. Let God deliver you. The deliverance of God comes from surrender to God. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to you, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. The good the bad and the ugly, I surrender all. My strength and my weakness, I surrender my all. My ability and my disability, I surrender it all to the sovereignty of God. Don't forget why you started. Don't ever forget why you're a Christian. Because when you do, you'll no longer be a Christian. It won't matter no more. But if you can remember why you're a Christian, why you live the way you do, while you pray and worship and believe God, you will be victorious. Godly wisdom, listen to me now, godly wisdom is going to lead you from here to over there. Godly wisdom is going to lead you through trials and temptations, through struggles. It will lead you. Every day you get up and you acknowledge God and worship and praise I hope I blessed you today. I hope I gave you some instruction. Like I say, I'm not judging you. I'm pointing my finger. Now, if you guys were as spiritual as me, you would be so good. What a stupid thing to say. We're on the same battle fighting the same devils. I'm ordained. That doesn't give me a shoe past temp temptation. I'm ordained. doesn't give me a shoe into heaven. Go, oh, Rev, Welcome. Oh, you're not ordained? Hmm. Take your jacket off. You're gonna, not going to need it where you're going. How stupid is that? How stupid is that? Shine, come back or do something. <laughs> Praise God. I can't say I got ordained in March 2003 in Scarborough, Ontario. God has no choice but to bless me, to anoint me, and to use me because I got the big O in front of my name. Rev. I've got to keep my heart humble. That's why Paul said, 1 Corinthians 9, 27, 
but I keep my body under subjection. Lest by any means, after I preach to others, I myself become a castaway. That's, that's, that's my thesis right there. That's the theme of my life. I got to keep my body under subjection. Lest by any means, after I preach to others, I myself become a castaway. I lose out with God. I forget where God brought me from. I forget why I'm serving God. I forget why I'm worshiping God. I'm forgetting why I love God. I've got to revive that. I've got to restore that each and every day. I'm a Christian today because he loved me. I'm a Christian today because he set me free. I'm a Christian today because he's been so good to me. I'm a Christian today because indeed he is a good, good father. He's led me through temptations and struggles. He's led me through the valleys low. He's led me through the mountain high. I've got praise upon my heart because of the faithfulness of God. He's answered my prayer and he hasn't answered my prayer. He's healed my body and he hasn't healed my body but he's still a good, good father. He's still a good, good father. I've had my way but he's had his way. He's still a good, good father. He's still worthy of our praise. He's still worthy of our worship. He's still worthy of our adoration. He's still worthy. He's still worthy for us to call him our Abba, Father, God, you've been so good to me. Where I see where you brought me from, where I see the pit you drug me from, I'm so glad. Oh, how about you? I'm glad. I'm glad today to be saved and heaven bound. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. As we begin to sing, this altar is wide open, folks. Praise God. This altar is wide open for us to come down and worship God. Say, God, I want to reconnect with you. <laughs> we were in Florida a few weeks ago, and I met a friend I went to Bible school with. I haven't seen him in 37, 38 years. Sat there, and we laughed, talking about our old Bible school days. It was so good to, Shane, if you're watching, down in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. It was so good to see you and Darla, to reconnect with them. And I want to do it again. But more importantly than that, I want to reconnect with Jesus. More important than that, I want to reconnect with Jesus. I've been 